Electricity, water, tons of water spinning hydro energy from as far away as the Skagit or Northeast Washington, transmitted into the city of Seattle on high lines. Electricity is distributed on lines. These lines must be installed, maintained, and repaired. And those repairs are done at all hours of the day or night and in all kinds of weather. You've probably seen people doing line work on an electric pole in your neighborhood. These people are called line workers. Line workers are well-trained, skilled craftspeople working in a highly technical field. Years of experience allows the line worker to safely move lines into place. The lines they are connecting are energized, which means electricity is flowing through them. Think about the hand-to-eye coordination needed to complete this operation. Line workers are courageous people. They brave the elements to keep our lights on, working around a hundred times the amount of voltage we have in our homes. They work at tremendous heights. It is not at all unusual to find a line worker perched 40 feet to over 100 feet in the air. They reach these heights on hooks, in a bucket truck, or sometimes by crane. Line workers learn their trade in a four-year apprenticeship program of on-the-job training and nighttime classes. The job requires excellent coordination, physical and mental strength, teamwork, the ability to work with a wide range of specialized or common tools, a dedication to safety, and a command of mathematical and electrical knowledge. Okay, up easy. This team is topping a pole so it safely clears nearby wires. The apprentice in the middle of the screen is securing a cross arm on a new pole. She needs upper body strength to do this part of the work. Her leg muscles keep her on the pole. The cross arm is perpendicular to the pole. It is used to hold the wires. Most of us have seen these arms dressed with hardware and porcelain insulators. The shape and length of the ridges on the insulator increases the insulating capacity. If the wire fell off the insulator, it would burn through the wood immediately and pose a serious danger to anyone nearby. You've probably already seen line workers in action. This video gives you an opportunity to take a close look at important aspects of line work. There are pros and cons to any job. As you watch the video, think how this work might suit you. Line work pays well, has excellent benefits, and those who do the job enjoy the challenge, the camaraderie of the crew, and the work itself. This is how the line worker career development video works. You should have in front of you a response sheet and a pencil or pen. We will show you five work situations. You will be introduced to a situation, have time to see it, then the video stops. A question and four possible responses will be read and appear on the screen. Choose the response that most closely reflects your personal reaction to the skills featured and put a circle around the corresponding letter. You are the only person who will ever see your responses. This video has been designed with the apprentices and journey level line workers you are about to see. We hope it will help you as you begin to make career choices. The upcoming situations involve listening, math, pole climbing, strength, and the ability to work in dangerous situations. Today this crew is working in an industrial area. All of the lines will be energized or hot. This allows business to continue without an interruption of service, but it increases the hazards for the line crew. This is a typical crew with an apprentice, two line workers, a material handler, a helper who is new to the job, and a crew chief. While team members pull the trucks into place and set up safety cones, the crew chief makes a final safety check. Power dispatcher, 108. 108, this is Durham. Now we have all opens for you on the southwest corner of Diagonal Avenue South and 2nd Avenue South. Uh, this is power, and I understand they have hold opens on the 26 kV line.
Having a hold open on a line is a safety precaution. It means that if an energized line short circuits or falls, electricity will instantly stop flowing through it, hopefully preventing injury to anyone. Situation one, listening. The ability to understand directions is crucial in this work. In the first scene, pay careful attention to what the crew chief says. Good morning, is everybody here? Yep. Our job this morning is to transfer everything from the old pole to the new pole. All lines are energized at 26,000 volts, but I have a hole open on all circuits. Now, the new pole is a 47-foot pole, so mount the buck arm four feet beneath the line arm. But you must maintain a minimum of three and a half feet beneath the energized circuit to the west. OK, Al, if you want to maintain three and a half foot of clearance on that circuit to the west, looks like we're probably going to have to lower that line arm down from the top of the pole. That's right. You'll also have to keep that corner closed. Okay. Situation one, listening. What did the crew chief say the job was? A, energize the lines to the western buck lead. B, maintain four feet of clearance on lines to the west. C, transfer everything from the old pole to the new pole. D, take the line arm up away from energized lines. The crew chief said to transfer everything from the old pole to the new. This situation required you to listen. The rest of the situations require you to think about your personal preference. Situation two, math. As job assignments are made, watch how the ability to do calculations is used by crew members. Okay, does everybody understand what the job is about? Yeah. Okay, Shelton, you and Janie take the bucket truck and go up and install the protective barriers, then start drilling up the pole. Okay. okay. Lou, assemble the three-phase lift and take out the hot sticks that you think you might need. Okay. Eddie, take Dennis over and start assembling hardware. Okay. Well, let's get the through bolt. They'll probably want that first. The what? The through bolt. Hey, it'll take a while, but I guess I'll earn it. This is a 16 inches through bolt. You know, you need a 16 inch one. You got 10 inches pole, four inches of cross arm, plus two inches of hardware, that'll make it 16 inches. Okay, I guess that is 16. He chooses the correct size of hardware, knowing it will be used to fit through the pole and arms. This is how the through bolt looks when it's used. Situation two. Math. Can you do calculations quickly? A. I don't do well with math. B. I can do that calculation in my head. C. I enjoy working with numbers. D. I could do it with a calculator. You must be able to do calculations in your head, and although sometimes you can use a calculator, it is helpful when applying for apprenticeship to have a background in algebra, geometry, and trigonometry if possible for the more complicated calculations on the job. Situation three, heights and hooks. We are seeing plastic blankets placed over the energized lines to protect the crew. Plastic or rubberized goods act as insulators. It is an important safety step to put them in place before actual work begins. The situation you are about to see will demonstrate how line workers get to their work. Hooks are very important to the line worker. They are made of steel and aluminum. A one and one eighth inch hook or gaff protrudes from the instep. It is this hook that the line workers kick into the pole when climbing. These are worn over specialized high-top line worker boots, then strapped and buckled snugly into place.
The body belt is another important item. The belt weighs about 25 pounds without tools. The belt holds tools, the hand line, and the safety strap. She sinks only one quarter of an inch of the hook into the pole when climbing. Notice how her knees actually turn out. Line workers say that you develop new muscles to be able to do this work. Once in position, she straps herself to the pole 50 feet in the air. Skill, strength, a safety strap, and a quarter of an inch of steel is what a line worker depends on at these heights. Situation three, heights and hooks. Could you work at these heights with this line working equipment? A. I think I'd like it. B. I'm afraid of heights. C. I'm not that coordinated. D. I could get used to it. Climbing and working high in the air is part of a line worker's daily life. Everybody has to get used to it, and with training and experience, climbing gets easier. Situation four, hanging the cross arm. Next we will see what is actually required to hang the arm. The apprentice is now preparing the pole. You should be aware that in some cases a hand drill must be used. As you watch this situation, pay careful attention to the strength in her upper body. The ground crew will hoist the arm up on a hand line and pulley. These arms weigh between 45 and 85 pounds. The ground crew will work together to lift the arm up and through hot lines that carry 26,000 volts. I'll take the arm any time. Are you ready for the arm? Situation four, hanging the cross arm. Could you lift up to 85 pounds while balancing on a pole? A, no, I couldn't do it. B, I can lift it, but not on a pole. C, yes, I'm strong enough to do it. D, I could do it with weight training. Upper body strength is a must in this work. If you are interested in the work but question your physical strength, you might consider joining a weight training program. Situation five, danger. This last situation is actually the most dangerous. The line workers are transferring hot lines onto the new pole. A special insulated tool called a hot stick enables the line worker to safely do his work. He uses the hot stick to wrap an aluminum wire around the line and insulator. The operation requires caution and total concentration. He does not want that energized line to fall.
The ground crew stays alert and anticipates the line workers' needs. They must be prepared to respond quickly during this operation. Man on buckle! Man on buckle! Line workers let everyone know when they are unbuckled from the safety strap, and everyone stops work until he is once more belted off. Electricity travels at the speed of light. If the line worker accidentally came in contact with any of the energized lines just two feet from his shoulder, the contact would cause a serious, possibly fatal accident. Notice the orange safety blanket behind him. Sometimes safety devices called pigtails and loose lines are also used. The crew chief keeps careful watch during this operation. Working around energized jumpers while moving hot wires requires extreme caution. Running hand line on the old pole. Running hand line on the old pole. Hey, Lou, we're going to have to get that jump, that hoist freed up over there so that we can get that wire tube moved. Hey, watch this jumper here. Hey, thanks, Lou. Maybe we got to get a pigtail on that and get it pulled out of our way, huh? Yeah, we're going to have to do that to work on that new permanent jumper. Hey, I'll need a pigtail and a loose line. Situation five, danger. Could you do this work and be alert to all possible danger? A. I can concentrate under pressure. B. Electricity makes me nervous. C. I can concentrate in a safer environment. D. I pay attention to what's happening around me. This work demands concentration. Through apprenticeship training and strict adherence to safety regulations, line workers feel secure in their work environment. Although line workers perform many kinds of tasks, almost all of them require the five skills we have just seen. Look at your response sheet. How did you do in the areas of listening, math, climbing, strength, and working around potential danger? If these are abilities you have or think you could learn, then a line worker apprenticeship may interest you. To become an apprentice, you must have electrical work experience and classroom training, pass an entrance exam, and have a valid Washington State driver's license. To find out more about this work, contact Seattle City Light at 625-3825 or 625-3273. And the next time you turn on a light, Remember, there's a highly skilled person somewhere down the line.